It's a uh, good morning here in New Jersey. How's everybody doing? Uh, it's been about maybe 10 to 13 days since I came here, but I'm glad to be back. Although I'm not fully healed, I'm still going through treatment. So I feel that I come back today because my stitches were taken out today. So the cut was from here to here. And I can tell you, it is sad indeed that my life will never be the same with this minor, I should call it minor, it's a small injury on my elbow, but it has um, taught me a lot of lessons. Um, when I went to the orthopedic today, I'm supposed to have had full range, full, full motion, full motion, uh, full range motion of this hand. But I'm not there. And I don't know for some reason. He told me I'm the first patient that he did this surgery to. And I didn't uh, get my full range motion after two weeks. So for whatever reason, uh, pray for me. I don't know why, but I'm trying. So I start therapy uh, next week. But the sky is here and it's here to stay. Anyway. So I figured we were supposed to have finished this book, but um, this happened, and I've not been able to talk because emotionally I wasn't there, but I'm coming back. So today I figured the good discussion we should have is about the community, because since I have been sick, uh, there is a community that has been there for me. I have people who have called me. I have people who have sent me money to buy food. I have people who call me every single day to see how I'm doing, and I will be forever grateful. And uh, that means I have a community online and offline. Some people come here physically, and they are. Thank you for those ones who have shared this. Thank you so much. Please share this video. This is actually so important because we want to talk about our community. Because every time something happens, we are here trying to mobilize the community so we can help each other and it's it's your time of um crisis that you're going to know what kind of community you have and if you've not liked my page came to thank you so much let me pin that um i'll pin that comment like my page it's going to help me in business if you have not been in crisis you're going to be in crisis and then you're going to know actually what a community feels like because Sometimes you don't know what a community is until you're in crisis. That's the unfortunate part. So for those of you who have not had crisis, this is a good time for you to shine. So that way, you create that community before that bad thing happens. So let's go to, to what we are talking about today. Identify what a community means to you. What does a community mean to you? When we talk about community, if I ask you, Kemito, what's your community like? I ask you, Mary, what's your community like? Do you have a community? Okay. And, and by the way, for those ones who are finding me for the first time, we were doing this book together. I bought this book at, at a five below. It was only five dollars. It's a very good work workbook that helps you to create awareness. So that way, you don't find yourself totally confused and lost because you didn't know what to do. It has um, hi she has highlighted everything that you need to create awareness. Okay. So. They are saying most people are already a part of a community of some kind, maybe a group that automatically associated through something or an online community that you found yourself in, or it could be a group that you inherited when you moved into a community. If you came to New Jersey, we have a group called Amasase, we have a group called Kwitu. So if you move to New Jersey, automatically we are going to put you in that group. That's, that, that's, that's something you're just coming into, you're not creating it. Okay, and then they are saying communities evolve over time because uh, an existing community can change or you can be involved with different groups or different communities or move and then you have a new community. So they are asking you to ask yourself this question. Uh, if you are new and you are finding me for the first time, always have a pen. Okay, and hold, always have a, a pad. So you write these notes. This class of, of ours, you always need to write notes so you can think later. You don't have to put it online, but you can, you know, sit in your quiet time and answer these questions, okay? So they're asking you, when you consider the word community, what, does the, what comes into mind? 
when you think about the word community, what comes into mind? Okay, what does your community look like right now? You have an online community and offline community. Consider the size of your online and offline community. Do you belong in a community where you live? Okay, now they are telling you to list three primary communities that you are part of. By the way, I forgot to even mention there is a, a, a community for the Catholic Kenyan, Kenyan Catholic community in, in New Jersey. I joined that community because I love what they are doing. I'm not Catholic, I'm Seventh-day Adventist, but I love what they are, they are doing. They, 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 they are just there. They are, they are there for each other. They sing when there's crisis, they come up. I met the group at a funeral that I had attended a couple, year, a couple years ago, and I was very impressed at their togetherness. And they have a men group too. They have a, a breakfast club for the men. They have, I think, a breakfast club for the women. It, it is amazing. I don't know if you guys have it in other states, but the, the, it's called Jumuiya. Uh, that's, that's, I believe that's the name. Um, and it is a beautiful community. The, the singing, I mean, when you're going through something, they're there. And, oh, I, I just love it. And I just uh, experienced them recently, and it, it's, it's just amazing. It's called Jumuiya, okay, St. Agatha. An, an amazing, if you're in New Jersey and you're not in that uh, group, you need to join that group. Even if you're Seventh-day Adventist, you just, you're just going to love that community. I love the way they, they come out, you know, to support their loved ones. I like the way they, like, they sing. They, you know, they meet every now and then for songs. Hold on. They have a choir, beautiful. So besides whatever is happening or whatever is happening, that brings them together. So that's a community. So they want you to list three primary communities you belong in. I have mentioned I belong in Kwitu. I've mentioned I belong in the Kisi group. I've mentioned I, I belong in Jumuiya. And do I have another community? I have another community at my church, Assemblies of God. So identify three communities that you belong in. What is the common force that drew, that drew you to that community? What is the reason you're in that community if you belong to one? When you're in that community, what do you talk about? I already spoke about Jumuiya. They sing. They are there for each other. They do breakfast. What other things do you do in that community? And when you're evaluating that community that you belong in, what do you think they are lacking? Maybe you're in a community that is dormant. Do you see something that you can... Uh, suggest or upgrade or what, what do you think your community is missing okay and then they also want you to answer this question what do you like the most about your community I have already said about Jumuiya what I like that uh, the most about that community is the singing I love music and then I like the fact that when there's somebody is in crisis it doesn't matter the time of the night they are there oh my goodness this this group just blows me out of my mind because we are far away from home and they are big. I think they worship in St. Patrick's, I'm not so sure, but they are asking you, what do you like the most about your community? What do you admire about people who are part of these strong communities? What do you admire so much about, about the people that are there? In this, uh, the Jumuiya community, I met a lady there called uh, Maria Kiyoko, and from the day I, I, I met Maria, I, I think Maria had known about me before I knew about her. So I attended uh, one of their functions at the church. And the one thing I liked about Maria, <laughs> she's just happy. I'm like, this lady is full of smiles. I mean, they were singing, there was, we were eating. And Maria, I, Maria just caught my eye. I didn't know her, but she was one of the bubbly, bubbly people. And, and recently, when they had a crisis in the community, she was uh, so much involved. I came to now on, on personal terms. I came to to really admire her greatly and, and the kind of uh, commitment and skill that she has as a community leader. And Maria, if you're watching me, I am so impressed and you really inspired me. I, I think I can do more. Once I, my hand heals, I need to do more community inclusion. So they're asking you, well, you know, what do you admire about those people? Who do you admire in that community that you belong? Okay, is there anything you miss about your old community in case you move? Some of us move from Kenya. 
But again, where they are going with this, they are telling you you can create a community. You probably had a nice uh, community where you are staying, you are in Nairobi, you are in Abuja, you are in Cameroon, you moved. What do you miss about that community? And if it's yes, are you aware that you can recreate that community? Okay? And then they're asking you, how much time and energy do you realistically have to be, a, do you have to, to use to be a part of that community? Like now, I, I want to still use Jumia as, as, a, as an example. When one of them is going through something, you all have to be there. So they're asking you, how much energy and time can you really put into that community when they, somebody is having crisis? Are you going to be available? And uh, do you have a balance? Or you are, are you planning, like, you know what, I'm, when some things happen, so, and so if people are meeting every day, I can actually meet, you know, twice a week. And even in the, 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 the recent community crisis we had, we, we, we were doing it in Zoom. So you can also be present in Zoom. When we have a, a, a community of cooking food, we have a, a, you know, a kitchen. Because regardless of what's going on, we still have to cook. Can you belong in the kitchen? If you can't belong in the kitchen, can you send your cash up? You could be in Germany, you could be in Australia, you can be anywhere. Nowadays we have a way to transact. You can belong in that kitchen group, right? By just sending a wire transfer so your money can be taken and, and, you know, they buy water. That means you are still part of that community. Okay? In the past community, is, you know, is the past community still relevant to the current community? So if you move from a community in Kenya and you came here, or if you move from a community from uh, Nigeria and you came here, does it, is it, did you stay in the same footsteps or you changed? Okay? What is the biggest obstacle of being in a community, on, on being part of a community? Now, I have spoken to a few people who have told me uh, the state Texas and Minnesota, the biggest obstacle they have of being a part of their community, I'm talking about the Kenyan community, is because every weekend there's something going on. And every weekend, if something is going on, there's funerals, there's wedding, there's events that happen every weekend. So a friend of mine was telling me she had planned to move to Texas, but she, she reconsidered because she said the, the Kenyan community is big in those states. And I'm giving you like a tailored uh, example of what can stop people from being a part of the community. So every weekend there's a baby shower, every weekend there's something. So you literally have no personal life for your children especially the community leaders, they end up just being in the community every weekend. So for those ones who are married to community leaders, they will sit and tell you that being part of the community can take away from you. So for many, they're asking you what's the obstacle. And it's not only time, it's financial. Every weekend in the U.S., if you have a funeral, it's $100. We literally part with $100 for something, either a wedding or someone is sick. We are always parting with money. So... They are asking you, what would be the obstacle that is, is you, you can see that is maybe keeping you or may, may deter you from being a part of the community? Are you, are you not sure what it is? If you are sure what it is, are you able to work around that thing so that way you can be a part of the community? Because if you are not a part of the community, once you get sick, you see now I'm sick, I can't do anything, right? I have a sick mother. I have, I have a 12-year-old that I have to drop and pick to, to events. I have all these things going on with my children. If I didn't have the community, then there's nobody who's going to help me. So what is that? Uh, what is that, the reason or what are the obstacles that you're facing that you're not a part of the community? Okay? And then they want to tell you, you need to understand why this matters. Ask yourself why this matters. Why is Penny talking about the community? Because you know what? There is nobody who lives by themselves. We've, we've had Kenyans who've been found dead in the house. People, not just Kenyans, Africans, immigrants who are found dead in the house. Why? Because they did not belong in a community. Nobody was talking to them. So they're asking you to understand why does this matter, okay? This matters because they're saying you have more power in shaping the groups you're part of and you might not even think about it. You might be in a community and you know you're just silent. You don't know what to say. You're just quiet. But they're telling you it matters. Because you know what? With the questions we have asked before, you'll be surprised you're the one who's going to make the change in your community. And you could be the community leader or help. But sometimes it takes a crisis to re-evaluate 
okay what is relevant and what's important in your community you don't you don't need to wait until you you lose a parent you lose a child you lose your spouse you lose your job you're sick they're telling you and i'm here and in fact i force myself to come here to tell you don't wait it matters what we are talking about matters because they don't want you to wait until you're in crisis so you that's the time you're going to create a community nobody knows the address to your house nobody has ever fellowship in your fellowship in your house you've never cooked a meal with for anyone you've never barbecued you know some of us we have a big yard i have a by the way if i show you my yard my yard is huge i can host i can even hold three or four hundred people back there it, it's a big it's a big yard when was the last time and I'm, I'm also a victim of that when was the last time i just took uh like maybe five hundred dollars and bought meat and told people hey come eat meat just for nothing i've not done that because the past year 2023 you people i don't know about you the whole year i was living in scarcity since my husband lost his job in 2022 june june of 20 july of june of 2022 we've been living on a single income the whole of 2023 i was living in scarcity so, you, and you know what that means that means you're on a tight budget so i'm not able to bring 400 people to the backyard that's an obstacle money matters because i'm not just going to tell people come eat meat and have not paid the house for the backyard i have to pay the house first so 2023 has been a terrible year for me and and to even make matters worse i got an injury in october that's it now it's gone so anyway they are telling you don't wait until you're in your crisis that's when you're going to 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 create your community okay set your priorities right focus on being a part of the community okay often when life changes people romanticize the past okay upon further reflection you may realize that the things you say or you miss about your old community may be pure nostalgia or its benefits its benefits are inflated in your mind now you are in kenya you used to live in kenya maybe you are, you moved here you want the green card now you are, you are in south, south jersey and you don't know anybody so now you are so busy living in your past like oh my my group in Yandochi, very oh my my group in Bosongo, or oh, you are crying about the community that you ha you used to have that would never come back. And you know in in in, in Swahili we say fimbo yembali awi nyoka. And I should have started by telling you that the local community is the most important community. The online community can send you money, but they can't come here and cook a meal. The online community is just good when it can do something and talk to you, call you. But you need a local community where, like I've, I've talked about Maria Kiyoko. I know Maria Kiyoko. If right now I hear something happen to Maria Kiyoko or Maria hears something happen to Penny, she can see me, she knows Penny. I have attended events we've met in different places. Maria knows me. But somebody somewhere, Grace Omondi, you are part of my community. Grace, you've been following me for years. Kim Torlaban, you've been following me for years. You guys have known me for years, but you've never seen me. I have never seen you. So identify and differentiate the local community and the online community or your community that you left in Buruburu. Okay? And then they are telling you why you need to connect with what matters. Why do you need to connect with what matters? Here is how satisfied I am about my current involvement in your community. Are you satisfied with the way you are involved in your community? And then they're asking you, here is what I have learned about these communities I'm part of. What have you learned? The communities you are part of. What have you learned? All of a sudden, I lost my right hand. It's crazy. All of a sudden, I'm self-employed. All the money I was making, gone. There's nothing I can do. I can't make waste beads. I can't lift anything. Everything is done. What? Gone. Look at this. How? I can't even stretch my hand. I can't even wash pots. Thank God I have all the children. What if you have small children who are crying? Who could have cooked for you? I am in a space where my children are adult children. They can cook. So if I was injured and I had just had a baby or you went to have a baby and you had an injury, you need that local community to enter your house. Stretch in your house. Mop your house. You need it. I'm telling you it is a crisis that you have to take care of before it is a crisis. 
And then they're talking about taking action. We've spoken about all these things. Now you need to take action. Going forward, consider how much involvement you'd like to have with a certain community. Okay? For instance, some people like activities that are more parallel and play, like reading together or walking together or going to the gym together or singing together. Others want a community where everyone is active on a chat or group between the, the, the members. I'm in a, a book club, a Kenyan women book club, that, oh my God, <laughs> if you like reading, you need to join that club, but it's in the U.S., it's for women in the U.S. I don't know if they allow women from other parts of the world, but there's a Kenyan community a book club, and that... That group of women are so funny. Are, some are reading science, some are reading fiction, some are reading history, some are reading autobiography. It is so amazing to, to, you know, to be in a group of people where people are thinking different things. I'm thinking, why would you be reading, like, fiction, right? They are thinking, why would you be reading about money? Why, everybody is reading something. But when we come together... We are all different and we make a community. And then someone will tell you, you know, fiction, you know, when I read these fiction uh, books, this is how they make me feel. When I read these spiritual books, yeah, we have spiritual leaders. I mean readers. They will tell you when I read, read such and such a book how I felt. And they will, they, will, they will make you think. So I'm in a community of readers. So you could join a community of readers, Okay. And then also think about how your community ties with multiple goals of goals, the goals you have in your life, and how it's going. Your community is going to impact you in different areas of your life. Often, when these are more entwined, you are more likely to commit to them. Once you've done these things and you've, you've decided this is how you want to move forward, you are more likely to commit to those communities. Thank you for watching. Share this video. If you've not gone to my YouTube channel, please go there. Because once I finish this video, I move this video to YouTube. I don't want you to re-watch the, the video, but I want you to share the video. Because some people are not on Facebook. And especially on a, a topic like this about community inclusion. Make sure you are part of the community. I have seen people who are looking for help when they're in crisis and they've never attended any function for anybody and that's why it's important for you guys to move over to youtube today in fact do that favor for me let me put that link move over to youtube and share this video with those other friends of yours that are not on on uh, facebook not everybody's on facebook and what's going to happen we are going to have better communities because they say sharing is caring information shared some people are just doing these things innocently they don't have people to teach them they don't have parents who told them what community means they don't have anybody who has come in their space and said you know what you need to belong to a community being a part of your community regardless of how how demanding it could be you need to be a part of that community because they are the same people who are going to bury you you cannot bury yourself. Uh, in Kisi we have a saying that they say that saying means when somebody dies they have to find the owners of the relatives of the dead person. Even in America or anywhere part of the world where you go when something happens to you they are going to look for your community. They don't, they don't just dispose you. They try to find out who knows this person, where do they belong. So if you are not aware, don't just stay in the house, create awareness and belong to a community where you are. And you know people take it lightly until something has happened. Do not wait. They told you that already. Do not wait until something has happened to you. Because once something happens to you, nobody knows you. We are not just going to stop what we are doing so we can come and help you. Because when we needed you, you did not come. So what makes you think that people should stop what they are doing now to come and help you? Be a part of the community. Another thing, we spend so much time and energy on social media celebrating high achievers, people who have successfully uh, gained financial independence. They are called celebrities. We share the information because these people have worked so hard and they have achieved 
or they, they, they've uh, excelled in one particular part of their life. They are high achievers. And I, need all, I always want to ask people to reflect on yourself. What have you worked so hard? As much as you love these celebrities, you like these rich and famous people. They have a lot of money. You spend a lot of your time on their platforms, which is Facebook, TikTok, Instagram. We spend so much time. These people have employees who are working to keep you on these platforms. Before you spend so much time on one platform or two platforms or three platforms, or watching people who have achieved, who have excelled, they are high achievers. Watching them day in and day out. Ask yourself, what have you achieved? What have you achieved as a person? And what makes you think you are not a high achiever? The only reason you are not highly achieving is because you are not focusing on what you need to achieve. You need to focus. And we thank God for the platforms, yes. But I want you to know there is an engineer behind the, 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 the platforms. There is a, 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 even a doctor. There, there is kinds of people who have been employed by these platforms, who have excelled in one or two areas of their, their careers. That's why we are able to run this. If Facebook stops one day, we are going to go crazy. If TikTok shuts down one day, we are going to go crazy. But you need to be the 1 and 2% that has worked so hard and has excelled in something. And believe me, whether you like it or not, you are not going to achieve that unless you belong in a community. Your network, they always say, is your net worth. Always remember that. Cheers and continue praying for me for healing. And I'm so grateful. Happy New Year as we get back. Please challenge yourself to be a better person that you were, than you were in the past year or last week. God bless you and have a lovely day.